when somebody grips what they're saying with a huge sense of the truth, they don't leave space for the listener to collaborate. If I tell you this is the truth, then I have entirely painted the whole canvas. If I present the same idea and say, this may or may not be the truth, I don't know, I'm confused, what do you think? Then I'm, I'm handing you the brush. I'm asking you, would you paint a little bit now for me? Colour in the canvas the way you think it should colour in. So what I'm going to put up is this podcast I did last weekend, and it's called Faith is the Opening of the Heart. And you can hear that I'm, I'm too enthusiastic. I'm, I'm over the top enthusiastic. I've got one single idea and then I start painting the canvas with it like there's no space for anybody else to paint. And that's despite the fact that it's a powerful and profound idea, the distinction between faith and belief. But when I presented it in this particular podcast, I painted the canvas so that nobody else gets a look in. And that is not looking for the silence between the words. If I converse like that, as I often do, at the dinner table, then I'm given nobody else an opportunity to get in to the silence between the words. If I write like that, I give nobody, I give no reader the opportunity to get into the silence between the words. The reason I read the story today was to illustrate that sometimes I think I have done it successfully, where I have written something very simple, and on every sentence or every line, you can get into the silence. Your imagination can allow you in there into spaces that I have not filled out. And you can use your imagination to wonder about the monk about the woman, about going away from her husband and whether it was good or whether it was bad or what kind of fellow was he. Was he actually really the the wise one in the story or was he an idiot? You, you can have all sorts of different feelings and it's all to do with your own imagination. You're making sure that you don't paint the whole canvas so that nobody else can get in. And that's the best advice workshop I could ever give in relation to creative writing. To try and write so that you're not filling the entire canvas. And it's the best advice I could also give myself in relation to how I am as a human being in my own life. That I regularly in my enthusiasms end up filling the entire canvas might be socially as I say at a dinner table or sitting beside somebody in a bus or a car or whatever and I realize when I walk away from it I just filled the whole canvas if you fill the whole canvas you've left no space for anybody and in a sense you learn nothing you learn nothing if you think you know everything There's a beautiful story, it's a a story from Buddhist tradition. The story is that the young student goes to the old professor or the old monk for learning. And as they sit down together, the old monk prepares the tea. And the young monk is talking about all the things that he'd really like to learn and why he's there and what he has studied so far and how interested he is in the different versions and aspects of philosophy and all the rest of it. And he's going on and on and on and on and on. And the old fella comes to the point where the tea is brewed, he has the cup and saucer out in front of the student and he starts pouring the tea into the cup. And when the tea comes to the rim, the full of the cup, the old man keeps pouring, pouring and pouring so that it's flowing over the rim of the cup onto the saucer and then over the saucer onto the table. And eventually, the young fella says, stop pouring, he says, the cup is full. And the old fella says, and so are you. 
How can I teach you anything? As he's left no space. He's like the full cup of tea. So I'm always trying to find the emptiness in the podcast. I'm always trying to find the silence between the words. I'm always trying to find that if I sit down with somebody and I find it fierce hard to do is to keep my mouth shut and listen. And try and listen so that the other person can fill the canvas. And when I have an idea, when I have some big new idea, like the distinction between faith and belief, instead of just teasing it out lightly, putting it in front of somebody, and then allowing them to kind of actively work at how they think about this idea, my tendency is I'll fill the whole canvas. So I'm telling you this because I would feel it's the most important thing if this was a workshop about how to write and how to storytell. Well, this is most important. Learn how to avoid filling the whole canvas. I'm also saying it to you because even though it sounds like it's against myself, it's not really. I'm saying to you that I always am trying to be in the space between the words, even though nine out of ten times I don't succeed. But it's still worth all the time trying to get this counterpoint to the action, the space where nothing happens, the space in between where the things happen. And if you can master it on the outside, which is the first place to master it, right, in your actions, you, t- you, t- you try to find spaces where there is nothing happening. Well, then the next one is the verbal. When you're sitting with somebody at the dinner table, where you try and not fill the whole canvas, not do all the talking, but actually leave things there in front of them and then see what happens when they start to use their paintbrush and paint the canvas. And the final place where this becomes a kind of a journey towards holistic health is when you begin to do it on the inside. When you begin to... I look at my faith not as a kind of a a whole rhythm of truth and a fabric like a kind of big woven tapestry that I believe in. This is all my faith. To me, it's something with gaps in it, with holes in it. It's like music that has space between the notes. And in the spaces between the notes, on the inside, there is nothing but emptiness and confusion and uncertainty. The spaces inside me where I don't know anything about God or religion or humanity or life. Sometimes those spaces are hard to endure because they feel uncomfortable. And sometimes when I grip the ideas the belief systems of a religion, they comfort me, they calm me down. Sometimes that's needed. But I know that I'm at my best when I let go even of those things and I enter into, I suppose what you would call the dark, the obscurity of just being here with all the hidden layers of identity that are in every one of us. Hidden layers. You can call them your subconscious or whatever you want. The soul. And that gets you to the profound encounter when the soul meets the beloved. But it's a place that there are no maps for. It's a place 
that you get to when you start to let go of the music, when you let go of the narratives, when you get let go of all the language of meaning, and in the gaps between the words, you fall into an abyss of being. And we're afraid of it. I am afraid of it, definitely. That's why I talk so much. That's why even on the religious stuff, even if I had a good idea, I would just tend to grip it too tightly and rant about it too long. The longer I talk, the less I know. I realise I know less and less the more I talk. But actually the talking becomes a process to get you to the silence. Well, thank you. This is one of those days where I feel you've helped me because working all this out, I'm here in splendid solitude at the moment and it has been such a a pleasure trying to work this out with you. So thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye.